they need to, to take this world successful, at least to give you some, some figures and some concrete information on what, what is the situation of the European Greens. First, to my person, I am the Secretary General of the European Green Party. You must know in Europe we have a Green Party. No, we are not the only political family who has a European wide Green Party. Also, the other families, the Christian Democrats, the Socialists, the Liberals, are the European parties. We, we are recognized as official parties by the European Union. We get some little uh, public spend, uh, subsidies for our existence. And uh, we are strongly linked to the European Green Group, which is the representation of the Green parties in the European Parliament. We have a parliamentarian group of uh, all, to, all together 42 MEPs. 37 of them are Greens, and we have a little coalition with the regionalists. Then we have around uh, 200 MPs, the people elected in national parliaments all over Europe. That means, to make it clear again, the, the European Green Party is not just a party of those parties belonging to countries that belong to the European Union, but it's also a party, it's a party which includes uh, the Green Party of Russia, the Green Party of Georgia, the Green Party of Ukraine, but also the Green Party of Switzerland, the Green Party of Norwegia, or other Green Parties who are not in countries who are not belonging to the European Union. And it includes also some Green Parties of countries which, where the population is quite critical, or where the Greens are quite critical in front of the European Union, as for instance the Swedish and the UK Greens. So we are a fund European organization. We have mainly organization of green national green parties. We have also what we call green supporters, as a people, activists uh, belonging to green parties who wish to be linked directly in some way to the European activities. Uh, so they are not members, individual members of the European Green Party, but they are supporters of the European Green Party, and we are strengthening our relationship with them. We have a, a youth organization all over Europe, which uh, is recognized by us as our green youth organization, and they recognize us as the uh, green mother or father party. We are creating a European green foundation, which uh, if everything works well, we would, I hope we will be ready at the end of the year. And we hope again here to get some access to public subsidies and some public money so that we can really operate as a European foundation. Of course, this European foundation is a strong, strongly linked with a lot of green clothes or green foundation existing, whether they are the first foundation, some of you might know it, the Germans Greens or the, the Bildungswerk, in the Austrian Greens or the, the other national foundations which work together with the National Green Party. Well, I, I, I spoke about the Green, Greens and the European Parliament, I spoke about the MPs in the national parliaments. I'm, let me, before I go further, at least mention the strongest uh, part of the Greens, which is the presence at the local level. I think we, I don't have the figures because it's probably several thousand, uh, let's say, we have more than 2,000 local elected, but it's much more, I think we have been. But that means we are, we are really strong in, at the local level. We have, we have a strong presence, in, in, as, as a, I think it's indicative, in some of the biggest cities of uh, the European Union, at least. That means we have the vice mayor of, of Paris, we have the vice mayor of, of, of London, we have the, the vice mayor of, of uh, Frankfurt, we have the vice mayor of Helsinki, we had the major of, of Dublin, we were we had the major of Rome in, in the past. So we are very present in the in the in the city policies. If you read the the New York Times from today, there's a long article of the bikes in Paris, and yes. uh, this is the work not of the major of Paris, that is the work of the res green responsible of transport. When you look at the article, it's a real, for Paris, it's a real revolution. Absolutely. And we are doing this kind of revolutions, and I'm very proud about that, in several countries, and London. I can tell you maybe two words. Uh, it's, it's interesting, that, I tell you that's what the, because of that. In, in Stockholm, the Swedish Greens uh, 
At the time, they were supporting the government. They were not in the government of the ministers, but they were supporting the Social Democrat government. And they find the window of opportunity to bring in some, some things, among them uh, the con congestion charge for Stockholm. Congestion charge as in the Swedish way to do things, with a very electronic, with a, uh, electronic control, so we pass with the, the car, got a little thing to, to com communicate with this electronic, how do you say? Post. Post, yes. Post. Yes. Post. So the car, the, when the car passes, <laughs> click, click, automatically it was registered. And so the idea was the following, that uh, if you go in the, in the inner city, in the, in, the, in the core of the city, and you pass these things, Post. Automatically, you get a bill, a certain amount of money, and at the end of the month, you get a bill at home for going to the city with a car. And well, the, the, I must I can tell you, I was there the, the, the first days of this, and the only who were happy were the taxi drivers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, everybody else was very afraid. Uh, I spoke with a little businessman, and they said, oh, we will make our food, uh, we will have enormous travels, mm -hmm. and so on. And they, I, I, could, I don't read Swedish, but I had the possibility to get some comments from other people. So it was very, very, very doubtful about this, this experiment. It was a test. It was an experiment, a pilot project, uh, 60 days or 90 days. And uh, after that, together with the European, uh, the, the national elections, uh, where the Greens uh, earned a little bit more, but were really not as successful as we expected. For my surprise, they get a big success with this pilot project, uh, with some exception in, 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 in Stockholm. The majority of the city, by 70% of the votes, voted in favor of this pilot project. And now you, it's, 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 a, it's that, there. So you go down to Stockholm, the streets belong again to the people, the children have again the possibility to, to be on the streets a little bit more. The businessmen are very, <coughs> Happy because the people walk in the streets have, re, have this feeling of reowning the city and buy things. So it's, a, it's a, a, a real improvement of quality of life. And I'm very proud when green politics is not always about putting standards and regulating and making things worse. Here, well, it was regulation, but we have that led to an improvement of the quality of life for the concrete people. And this was acknowledged by them by a referendum. But this, I think, is a very good success of local policies. We have this kind of uh, initiatives all over Europe, and uh, we are trying now to push the local green politicians to be more proactive also beyond the borders of their city and their, their village, and uh, to be a kind of additional body in the frame of the European Green Party, and that they take uh, the lead in circulating this information making public the best experiences, helping those uh, local politicians who have, uh, are beginning or trying to improve the situation in the cities. Last remark on this numeric thing, we are present in six, well, let me see, uh, I don't say five or six, governments with ministers. We are present in the Czech Republic uh, with, uh, with a very strange situation. We are uh, we had a big success for us in the, in the elections there last year. Okay, uh, some, one year ago, more or less. Uh, we got six, we, from zero, we went to six MPs. And the situation was extremely complex because uh, in, during the campaign, we, we said that we are open to different coalitions, but uh, the Greens were not disposed to go to a coalition with the Communist Party. In, in the Czech Republic. This, you have to understand, the, 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 the Communist Party or the Czech Communist Party is one of the most old-fashioned Communist Party in Europe. They haven't moved any <laughs> millimeter, and they're still <laughs> thinking, as they thought at the time, they, they supported the coming of the Russian uh, army, or more or less, let's say. Um, the situation was very difficult because uh, the left and the right side divided, let's say, there was no clear majority. And the Greens were in some way the ones who uh, could decide 
What you're saying is the king's power. 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 They were doubting a lot if they go to a coalition with the right party. Uh, but then there was a concrete ris risk that the both socialists and the, and the, and the OD ODS come together in order to reform the lecture system, saying, well, you see, this lecture system allows these boiler groups, to use this last word, to, uh, to, to bring mess up the situation, and therefore, it would be good to reform the electoral system. So it was also, not, not only, but it was also a question of so, so, to subsist, to continue to exist for the Greens, to be proactive and looking for a, a participation in coalition and avoid this big coalition uh, following the German model be, between the Social Democrats and the Christian Democrats. And, well, they got a lot of uh, good things. Uh, they got four ministers. The what side did they join? Huh? Who did they join? The right, the right side. The right side. The right side. The, the, let's, let's say, it's, it, I don't know, it would take too much time, but I can tell you, they have had a lot that the European policy, meaning uh, integration and, and a more positive attitude from the side of the government to, towards the European Union, it was one of their points and this was one of their conditions to be in the coalition. They were able to block and to keep the blocking of the Moravia, Moravia well, the, the coal product, production in, in a very heavy uh, coal influence region of the of, uh, of, uh, Czech Republic. They were uh, able to stop uh, crazy ideas about uh, increasing the truck transport through and uh, along and uh, everywhere in, in the Czech Republic. So they have a lot of very concrete points, but one point was the most difficult, and this is the most mm, difficult point with, where they have now, is that uh, the US, your nice uh, friend Bush, is pushing the installation of the missile radars Mm -hmm. uh, the missiles in Poland and the radar in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, I think for those who follow more foreign policy are uh, very well aware of this problem. And uh, for the Greens, this is an extremely complex situation because the Green Party basically is against this. Uh, the opinion, the public opinion is against this. Uh, but because of this present government, uh, due to Open the, the complete conflict on that would mean the end of the government. And uh, they are trying to say, well, this is cannot be this resolved bilaterally. The Czech Republic belongs to the European Union. This has to be discussed at the European Union's mm -hmm. level. This has to be discussed in the frame of the NATO. This is not, they, to try to say, well, this is not a bilateral thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they, are, uh, they are even activists of the Greens support uh, Local people, there are some, some referenda in the regions where the radar has to be installed, and they try to, they, they were involved in some way in this. Uh, but the thing is going on, and uh, I don't know how it will finish. They are trying everything to um, make that the things take time in order that the Bush administration is so, in the meantime, so weak that uh, they are not, it has not a, a the strength to, to push this, um, but it's not clear what will happen, and uh, it might be that they will have to face the situation, that there will be a vote in the parliament, and that they uh, will have to decide how to vote on this. It is not clear if they can vote uh, abstain or something like that, because it would be a, a probably a point of a crisis of a coalition. We are in the government in, 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 in the Finnish Republic, which is also not easy. But again, um, in the Finnish Republic, we, we, we got a series of, of points. Uh, the list is long. The two, two artificial lakes were, were, are not going to be 
the, These are dams of rivers. Dams, yeah, which was very controversial, was a long lasting uh, requirement of the NGOs. Uh, we, we were able to, to, to on things on, on, on fees, university fees, on, on taxation, on etc., 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 etc. We got two ministers, the, one, the labor minister and the justice minister. But uh, we have a serious problem, which is not linked necessarily to the present government, it's linked to a decision which existed uh, before the Greens uh, went in government, because there was a decision of the Finnish parliament supporting the uh, idea to build a new uh, nuclear plant in, in Finland. Uh, it's, it's a special reactor which is uh, built by, by Areva, it's a French uh, company. This was uh, was still decided by the, by the parliament, so the government is executing what the parliament has decided. Uh, uh, to my question, if uh, it would not be possible to ask a, a, a referendum on that, they told me no, they, they will lose the referendum because the, the Finnish population is in favor of this because of the history, because they depend from the Russian gas and etc. etc. So they wish. They're very keen to have energetic independence or autonomy. So, uh, you know, the Greens left the last government because of the, this uh, idea to build a new uh, a nuclear plant. So in some way they have a, a, a clean hands in this because, well, they are under the government. But now this is, uh, this is part of the former decision of uh, the Finnish parliament, of the Finnish uh, the social democrat would have, have uh, would make it exactly the same, so they decided to go in government nevertheless, and we uh, will see what happens. They have the environmental ad ad advisor of the first minister, and I'm I'm confident uh, that the Finnish Greens will be able to to print, to give a clear uh, ecological footprint uh, and, and, and the progressive footprint to to. There are areas where they are active and to the specific areas of the Greens. They also got uh, a commitment for the government to pursue a guaranteed basic income yeah. as part of the tax policy. And having a, a, a basic income is something Green parties in Europe have been trying to do for years. As in Austria, they already have an arrangement. You must know also that, that uh, they have an arrangement that uh, when it comes to the vote, if there's a vote in the parliament on this again or something, they will vote again. And they of the, uh, this part of the agreement that they, it's clear that the Greens will speak against nuclear energy in any way. So this is, well, this doesn't change the things, but uh, at least it's, uh, yeah. Well, then we are in, in you know this, uh, Ireland. It's also not easy. Uh, it's a complex situation. It's a very surprising evolution. Uh, you know, it's a very surprising situation because it was not really expected that there would be a coalition between the Greens and Fianna Ford. Fianna Ford is a conservative, uh, a little bit populistic, uh, clever leaded party. But it's 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 a but well, the Fianna Ford is the father of the Irish uh, tiger economic tiger model. So it's, it's not exactly the most social <laughs> party. Um, Bertriana even was, was uh, accused to have had some dirty affairs. And he was accused by the Greens. But he got a, a lot a large support by the population. And uh, the situation was so that there was no other, there was no possibility for the Greens if they Decided to go in government, that to do it with, with Fianna Foy. And Fianna Foy was making a lot of effort to get them into the government. It's also a long history. There's a very exhaustive article from Mike on that. You can, I don't know what was the meaning of this. In, in Green Pages. Green Pages, yeah. Yes. The, the, the discussions were very tough. The, the, the Greens went out from the, the negotiations. The Fianna Foy ran behind them and talked them back. Uh, they they got two ministers, key ministers, that we have to say, uh, the, the environmental minister and the transport and communication minister. It's very important. 
they, they, they got some uh, junior ministers, I have called the state secretary, so I would say, and they, they got, uh, if I could be too long, please. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Uh, and they got uh, some new additional positions in the Senate, which was the government has the possibility to nominate, it's a strange system, but to nominate some people in the Senate. So they, they, they got good positions, and they did, uh, a, let's say, a quite good deal, a tough deal, a quite good deal with some difficulties. The most important difficulty is the Greens were always, together with the peace movement and so on, against the utilization of the Shannon Airport uh, as, a, as a place where the U.S. planes land on their way to Iraq. But it was more than that. It was not, not only the, on the way on Iraq, but it was also CIA planes who landed there and they were to Torture. To torture. Yes, that's the direction. Yes, that's the direction. Yeah. You never know what was the geographical destination exactly. Yes, so they they get a partial success, I would say. So that this CIA thing is the government agreed to make sure that this is stopped. That means the skilled people in the airport. It means strong control in the airport. It means from the side of the government not to accept any kind of arrangement on this side. But the government was absolutely again, or the Fiat board was absolutely again, to uh, look at, to have revised, to modify the decision concerning Shan. So this is, the, the Greens had to swallow this. This is, a, it was a, a very hard decision for them. And it was a very hard decision for them to uh, accept, well, let's say, they were the, the toughest uh, critic, uh, ones who criticized uh, Arhan because of his uh, not so clear affairs, or I would suppose near fraud and things like that. So the, the leader of the, uh, the, the Greens of Ireland, who has made a campaign saying that he will never go to a coalition with, uh, he will never lead the party to a coalition with uh, Arhan, he dismissed. Uh, so he was not the leading negotiator, and he didn't take the leading positions in the, in the government. So the position of the leader of the Green Party is open, and uh, in these days there is a referendum going on to nominate the new leadership. And there is a clearly uh, Tom Gormley, who is the environmental minister, who was the key guy making the negotiations. He is candidate for the president of the party, and then is Patricia McKenna. She is a, a radical uh, pacifist, I would say. Uh, uh, I think she will make a strong point on the Shannon issue. And I find it's good that this, this polarization exists in the party, that, that the members of the party have the possibility to decide on these two positions. I think John will win, but there will be a consistent minority who will express their critic point of view. And well, uh, we will have to see what happens. I finish. Uh, One twenty. We got a three percent per annum global greenhouse gas emission reduction target uh, from the government as part of this deal. Uh, so, uh, Italy, you know from something about this. Uh, this is the post-Berlusconi era. Yeah. Uh, you know probably more about the Berlusconi era than the post-Berlusconi era. He was Berlusconi was more visible, more. More mediatic than, than probably he's a very yeah. great, great man. <laughs> uh, sometimes you have the impression when he speaks that he rests to sleep. Himself gets uh, sleep as that <laughs> when he speaks uh, <laughs> without speaking about the people who listen to him. Uh, but uh, here the, the situation is, is, is very difficult because uh, this is a coalition which is made with an extremely uh, Delicate equilibrium. You have to, they have to gather whatever they could gather in order to get 50.01 percent to have this government. Because Berlusconi have made a very good election, and so the the party camp is a very weak camp. Is I don't know the number of parties in this coalition. I think it's seven, eight, or more. 
uh, the Greens are one of this, this uh, part of these coalitions. They have, the, they have the environmental minister. They have uh, they got the minute the, the president of the commission of the Agri agriculture commission in the parliament. They got uh, they have some junior ministers, state secretaries, uh, for instance, in agriculture. Uh, they well, they got some position in the government, and uh, but basically they. They have the same environment and the agricultural policies. For the rest, it's it is it's very difficult. And one of the difficulties was uh, the uh, renewal of the budget for the presence of the Italian troops in Afghanistan. Each year, this has to be renewed, and uh, the the there was a, a serious risk that the Prodi government doesn't has its own majority for uh, giving green light to this uh, new budget because of the discussions linked to the presence of Italian troops in, in Afghanistan. Uh, the, the, it was a very dramatic thing, uh, uh, probably threatened to, to dismiss, and, uh, and uh, it was very near of a government crisis. At the end, they find a way, one of the Greens was very strongly linked to the peace movement, I think he didn't get to, went to the vote at the last moment. And uh, because there was a majority with, uh, of the other side, with the other side. And the same for some of the communists who were in the coalition also. They, they split it and uh, there were there two communist parties and uh, or even more, two I think. One of them was more radical and uh, they didn't go to vote. So they didn't vote against, they didn't go to vote, something like that. So uh, it, it was, saved uh, in a very difficult situation. But this government is, is, is very weak. Uh, what the Greens are trying to do is, well, they had some successes. They, they stopped uh, a very controversial tunnel. They didn't stop the tunnel. They, they were able to change the, the trace of the tunnel. And the, the highway, which went for, goes from France to it Italy, the kind of corridor, as, as Janet would say. Um, <laughs> And when well, this has been stopped, uh, they stopped the bridge on the Messina. Uh, how do you say this? Uh, Straits of Messina. Straits, Straits, yes, yes. Which is a crazy mm. idea of, of, of Berlusconi. Mm. But it was, uh, well, the Greens had a strong role in stopping this. Mm. They were able to put consistent money in the budget of this year, for, but they're, they're only there for one year, uh, for uh, environmental things, uh, renewable uh, energies, and so on and so forth. They have a strong coalition with uh, the former, uh, well, not the former, the, one of the Nobel Prize people in the energy question who was extremely pro-nuclear and who shifted totally that position. And now he's working together with the Greens, the Rubia. You must know, Italy, Italy has had, had a referendum 15 years ago, 10, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, against nuclear energy. And the Greens was very instrumental pushing this referendum, there was a, against nuclear, so Italy has no nuclear energy, and we are, I will, I will be in the 20th of, uh, some days I will be in Rome, we will be uh, having a happy uh, uh, anniversary to uh, of this referendum. <laughs> well, then last is Latvia, we, have, we are in the government in Latvia, and this, Latvia. It's a very complex situation, it will take a lot of time to explain this also. <laughs> I think I can uh, shorten this a little bit. What I, I, I try to s uh, tell you with this, all these examples is that we have, we have in a, we are in a new situation. We, 10 years or 8 years ago, 7 years ago, we were in six governments, France, Italy, Belgium, Germany, uh, well, I don't remember. Finland. Uh, no, Finland. 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 Uh, center left governments. Now we are in, in six governments. Uh, five of them are center right governments. Yeah. And, um, well, this re requires an explanation. Uh, I, I think uh, I tried to explain a little bit in the in the meeting we had the other day, uh, you must understand that well, uh, here you have a goal of speaking about environment, but uh, not being very effective because nothing happens. Well, now you have uh, Nancy Pelosi who is making this package on 
on energy and climate change things in the, in the, in the Congress. Uh, I don't know what you think about it, but my impression is that this uh, is, is not very consistent. I don't see the money for that. I don't see the concrete measures for that. I don't see the targets for that. Uh, I see that it's, it's the first time that the Congress seriously discuss about the environment. From this point of view, for sure, it's, it's an improvement. But I don't see that this will be a real uh, give life to a real environmental active uh, policy, also because uh, the Congress won't be able to push this through. The situation in Europe is, more, is very different. We, we, uh, the, the, our agenda is leading the policies in Europe. The, la the last Council meeting of the European Union in March decided that the European Union has to cut, for us not enough, but anyway, to cut by 20% the uh, CO2 emissions uh, uh, until 2020. We asked 30%. They are they're promoting strongly uh, biofuels. We are not very happy about it, but we, because we don't, uh, we will we'll hear from Mark later on, uh, we, we are very critical about it, the biofuels, but they are doing things which are seen in the, in the media and by the opinion as steps in the, in the environmental uh, era. They are adopting measures in the energy sector which is uh, separating the, the greed from the producers to bring in more competition. In some countries, also because of our influence, they have uh, opened the greed, made what we call intelligent greed, that means that the farmer can put a windmill in his farm and introduce electricity in the, in the national grid or even the European grid. And they are, they are financing this, they are financing solar roofs, they are financing renewables, there, are, there, is, there is movement on the, on the energy and climate change questions. Also, in, in, in GMOs less, we are unhappy, but for instance, the chemicals, we are not happy with reach. If you have heard about this, it's a, it's a regulation which uh, makes a screening of all the chemical elements in, in everything, in all the foods, and uh, the enterprise have to prove that they are not dangerous for health. There are around 2,000 uh, or more uh, chemicals. So there are things moving. Of course, a lot of this has to do with our efforts for 20 years to push this agenda. But now they are taking over this our agenda. And uh, Sarkozy has, co has called the, what he calls the Grenelle de l'Environnement. He is opening, uh, uh, he has created a super ministry of the environment, transport, and uh, something economic, economic policies. And this is a, is a green ministry, he says that, and he wished to discuss with the, no, and he did do that, he discussed with all the NGOs and the, the people who wish to come, what this ministry has to do. Of course, he will decide at the end, but nevertheless, Greenpeace is there, the Friends of the Air are there, all the organizations, World Life, uh, World, World, World uh, Fund is there, etc., etc., and some of the Greens will also get, go there. So the, 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 the agenda is all, is taken over, and we are, uh, have a, a serious problem to show that, uh, but and no, it's not, let's say, the problem is, is the following one. The people trust the Greens as the ones who are the most skilled, the most uh, convincing people, the most serious people on this agenda. There's no discussion on that. Nevertheless, when it comes to the vote and when it comes to things, they, uh, they have sometimes a doubt if it's better to, to vote the original or the copy. <laughs> and uh, the other copy very well. Even, even Brown, uh, Brown, uh, Brown in, in the UK, but even Cameroon in the UK, he, he uh, presents himself as a, as a the green uh, candidate because he comes with the, uh, with the right to the work and he puts, a, he's, I think he made a crazy idea to put a windmill in his garden. And we know that at the end he will finish uh, following the, the dictat of the corporations. But nevertheless, for the time being, he's presenting himself as, as the green. So we have this, the real situation that we have to make, we have to 
overcome our tradition to be the ones who speak about the problems and, uh, and uh, indicate the drama which would be linked to those problems, because this is now done by the, the scientific world, by Nicholas Stern, by the IPCC from the UN, by et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, even by Go. What we have to do now is to come to the solutions. Solution means where we take the money to finance the research we need in the renewal. Solution means what kinds of taxes we wish to impose and to bring forward in order to subsidize and support a shifting to renewable energies and renewable production and green production in general, etc., etc., etc. We have to be extremely skilled and link the skill with the capacity to say this in a, in a way that everybody can understand. And that's not easy. That's not easy. And, uh, and, and, and the problem also is that we, we have the risk that if we are stay in the position, and just in the position, we are not, not anymore taking a leading position in, in executing policies in this area, that we uh, risk to, to, to weaken, to, to, to disappear. So I, I know that this is a, uh, we can discuss later on about this. I think this is a, it's a serious point. We had a, a good example, for instance, France. In France, you have a system, electro system which is not very far from you, the ones here. Uh, that was a, a very popular guy. Okay. A very popular guy, his name is Hulot. Maybe you have seen the films of uh, Monopoly Hulot. <laughs> okay. Um, he is a, is a very popular uh, television guy. He makes very good programs on environmental things for years. And he created a foundation, and uh, he become, uh, he began to play with the idea that, well, I, I will be candidate for presidential elections. And he was in the opinion polls uh, with 10, 12, 14 percent, more or less. And then he said, well, I make a pact. And if the other parties sign my pact, my 10 points, I won't run. So we had to negotiate with the socialists, we had to negotiate with Sarkozy. This ministry of Sarkozy is part of his impression. And this is, was th something where the Greens were looking at him doing this. He was saying to the society, listen, uh, ecology, green politics, is not left, not right, the right can do it, the, the socialists can do it, the, the communists can do it, the Greeks can do it. Uh, it's a social problem. And we, we were saying green is, 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 is linked with, so, with radical socialist policies, with uh, the left policies, etc., etc., were marginalized. We got 1.5% in the presidential elections in France. We will normally get 7, 8, 9 percent for the European elections. We will get the same amount for the local elections or even more, and 6, 7 percent for, for, for other elections, other elections. We got 1.5, and the candidate was not bad. She's a well-known. She, she was a former minister of environment. Uh, she is a, but the Greens were seen as uh, isolated, marginalized, not have, were not able to establish a dialogue, a social political dialogue with Ulo. Uh, they tried to, to, to win him, and, and when he said no, then they began to accuse him, and then they. It was not clear what the Greens were doing there. It's a very difficult situation for the Greens. And that's, that's not the situation. Now we have a crisis in, in, in the Greens also because there is a lot of discussion about that. But that's not the problem. We can discuss about if, if there are problems with the Greens, if they organize well the campaign, if they profile the country. We can discuss, discuss all of that. But the problem is more complex. The problem is that the environmental agenda is in the middle of a society. And if we don't are uh, able to, to occupy this place, we will be uh, ignored by the, by the evolution. So I finish with this. I hope we can have more discussion about this. Because I think this is a serious problem. Uh, I, 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 I ask you also to reflect a little bit what well, is your situation here. Uh, I think you will be beginning to face this more and more. Uh, I don't know how far seriously the Democrats are uh, to, to tackle this agenda, but uh, 
they are uh, beginning to, to, to make some steps. I don't know so, how far, what is your goal, what goal you would have. But uh, I think uh, we have to be very strong in defending our agenda in the society and defending this agenda politically. That means not that we sit on our, our agenda, but we, we challenge, we uh, promote the discussion, we go to the society with proposals. We have to be the ones who are the leading force in this paradigm, this change of paradigm, uh, which we, we think our society has to go through. We have to know the problems and we have the solutions. Juan had talked about the evolution between joining with center-left uh, coalitions off over those years and the fact that we're in center-right coalitions now. One of the things he didn't mention, and maybe you want to expand upon, is the fact that the center-left major parties in Europe, they're falling apart. Yeah. <coughs> exactly. I, I put you at the point I have to insist a little bit is uh, after the German elections, uh, when they were in November 2006, no, five, five. Uh, it was clear that, that the red green coalitions were not uh, able to build a government because they had not the majority. Uh, and this is a situation also in France where you take the the former forces who were the government at the last time together, Green, Greens, Communists, and, and Socialists, and they, they were not able to build a government. So we have a situation that in, in most of the countries, if you look at, the, at what you mentioned about, about Italy, uh, the, the, the complicated operation they had to make to build up a coalition. So in fact, after the German elections, we have a situation that it's extremely difficult to, to build a, a government coalition, a red green coalition, as was the case 10 years ago. So this is a new element, together with the element of the uh, fact that the agenda of the Greens is now a mainstream agenda. So this, I think, we, have to, you know, we cannot forget it, because if not, it's true what Mike says. Uh, if we forget this, we don't understand uh, uh, the, the, the present situation. In, 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 in. If, if I may add one element to what you said, uh, I, I think it's very important. Um, you know, the, we, we are, because of the reasons she's mentioned, and it would be too long now to, to explain this, why we are so strongly in favor of the not only and not just the economical inter, in, uh, integration of the European Union, but it, the political integration, the social integration, or the uh, stronger social cooperation, and also the cooperation in the, in the, in the, at the level of human rights. We have, we have to, it's true that the history of the European Union, Union began with a, not a very democratic steps. The coal and the steel union at the time was an invention of some, maybe the, 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 the German, the, 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 the Luxembourg, and the French foreign ministers, or around, or around them, or first ministers, who created this uh, steel and coal union because it was the way to, to come, overcome the situation after the war establish a kind of dialogue, establish and try to get the, the, the issues who were the reason for the different wars, the steel, the, the, the power, the, the coal, out of the of the of these tensions among among national states. Also after that, the adoption of the of the, the uh, agriculture policy was not a very democratic agreed uh, thing. The the European Parliament emerges as a not directed, direct elected parliament. 50, 20 years after these first steps. So I, I think you can also, you can obviously say, well, listen, listen, look at how the European Union began. But the situation was absolutely different. The situation here in the frame of the NAFTA is not a situation of countries who emerged from a war. It's not that the, the role of this kind of cooperation is not to overcome the hate and the 
the deep uh, hate existed among the people. Th this kind of bridge is not needed to be built here. We, we are not necessary to make these first steps to make democracy at the end, I don't know when. What it should be now is this, if you make, which I would think it might be a good idea to have, have a, a regional integration, but it should be a based on, made on, on a democratic basis, involving the parliaments, involving the NGOs, involving a, a, a public discussion to have everything on board to, to, to have the possibility to participate. And also, if you discuss integration, and you discuss opening trade and market, then you have to discuss also the recirculation for people. And I don't think that the cooperation model you have described has any intention to, to go in this direction, but I would be very surprised. But not only that, we, we, we have, as I mentioned, uh, as you said, check and balance and so on. We have a direct parliament. We have a, 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 a social economic um, council where unions and, uh, uh, and entrepreneurs are discussing. We have several bodies. We have a, a legal system which is functioning. With, so I think uh, I understand that, that uh, this cannot be built from one day to the next. But According to what I hear, this is absolutely the, the, the follow-up of NAFTA being, being put in the trade pressure in the center, the trade without considering the social things, without considering the, the environmental aspects, and of course without considering the democratic implications of this. So therefore I think we, what she was saying is, is extremely important to, to look at this more carefully, and, and uh, I think we can be uh, absolutely agreed, absolutely, that this is a, a good point to, to make a campaign in, in, in Canada, and not only in Canada, but also in, in the U.S. And I think the argument of the asymmetry, where at the end, you said the other day, as the people just said, Canada is the one providing the, coal, the, the, the oil, uh, Mexico providing some, some workforces, and, and uh, the truck drivers, and, and, the, and the U.S. is the uh, leading force in this thing. So this I think we have to study very carefully, very clearly, but I think uh, uh, maybe the reaction noise is not a, a, a close defense of the respective uh, nationalist uh, uh, integrity, because I think that's my, maybe not, but in, under this situation, I think it's not possible to, to go along with this. If you allow me also, I, I know that some of the things said here I said about the governments and the, we have a discussion, we have several discussions among, among European Greens, I think, and, 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 and the US Greens, and we, some, a lot of these aspects are, of course, also lack of reciprocal knowledge and so on. I, I would say on trade issues and VTO and this global governance and so on, we feel very near from what she was saying. We, we have been pushing the, the Tobin tax we have been promoting, we are criticizing strongly the VTO because of serious reasons, because it ignores the social aspect, it ignores the, the, the environmental aspects, because it doesn't take into account uh, the hierarchy of norms. Mm -hmm. To us, the UN is the leading body and not the VTO. And there should be a, sub, a, a subordination of the, of the VTO under the UN. And for instance, also, under the OET, I'm using in, in English, the, the labor organization of the UN, ILO. ILO, the VTO is not respecting the rules, and the, these minimum rules, and, and uh, difficult agreed rules about, about the ILO, so the, the VTO don't care about that. So I'm not an expert on this, on this aspect, but I think I feel very near what you're saying. So we have a, a strong critic on, 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 on on the way at this moment the world trade and the world financial world is organized and, and, and this hidden government government governance through the World Bank and the, the International Monetary Fund and so on. So I think we, we have no, no real uh, serious differences on that. I think we have probably differences on other aspects. I, I know it's very late now, but uh, let me say it. Uh, I think we have to understand, for us it was very difficult, and this touched here of several people who come to the working group on foreign policies. 
we, we, uh, well, we came from a pacifist movement. And a lot of our dreams were of people who were Gandhi inspired or oriented and linked. Even if from the very beginning there were other people, there were people the Greens who supported the liberation movements in, in Latin America and elsewhere. And there were Greens even helping actively these movements. So we, there were not just Gandhians, but Gandhians were an important part of, of, of our movement. We had to learn in the meantime that taking political responsibility is complex. We have responsibility being a political force for what happened in Rwanda. Yes. We have a responsibility for what happened in, 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 in Srebrenica yes. and in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yes. We have a responsibility, we have a responsibility for what happened in Kosovo. Yes. We have to distinguish between aggression wars, occupation, and with this humanitarian trying to help to avoid conflicts. We have supported the presence of military forces in Lebanon and we were very happy that Italy and others offered the forces to be there. We did the same in Albania at the, at, at the time. So please let us distinguish between, I know for us the last, the military resource is the last one. And we have criticized very strongly the international community and Europe in particular because they didn't do anything for the Kosovo during 10 years. Even if we were saying people, we have to intervene, we have to look at the mediation, we have to think about the protectorate of the United Nations of Kosovo very early without any kind of military thing and so on, and no one did anything. At a certain moment, the thing can become a claim thing. Some of our people spoke even about uh, genocide. I know that this is a thing to be discussed. But if this is real, uh, we, the international community cannot just say, well, I don't care. We, we, about the food. Well, we are not for a military solution, but and here again, the international community is not doing enough. In China, we are saying we, we wish to be boycott. It needed the Olympic Games in China because China is, is supporting uh, the Sudanese government, who is supporting the, 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 the paramilitary forces in Sudan. But we are also taking the, in, in consideration the possibility and support the idea to establish a, a multinational it was a strong presence of, the, of troops of the African Union uh, in, in, in Sudan. And this is probably at the end a, a kind of civil military operation. So we can have discussion of this kind of things, but please don't, uh, sometimes I have the feeling that as soon as I speak of something like that, I, I'll be put in, in a kind of uh, coin as, as a militarist. We are not military. We, 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 but we cannot ignore the, the, the political responsibility, the international responsibility we have. And this is, a, 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 for me, a, a, strong, a strong point. Last remark. I, I, I agree with Marco. Uh, we, we, for, for us, for everybody, and you know that your presence, your activity, your role is extremely important. Extremely important. We were discussing this weekend about the uh, Kyoto and post-Kyoto and climate change and so on. But we need a partner in the U.S. who is strongly, visibly engaged in uh, pushing the U.S. to come back to a multilateral environmental policy and come back to a process of a post-Kyoto process, together with Australia, together with etc., etc., etc. My question is the following. I see that the logic, it's a little bit the French system situation. The logic is very strongly articulated around this presidential elections. But our experience, and I think the Brazilian experience is maybe more than, than some of our experiences. The way the Greens get made their way was not uh, having presidents. The way they made them, it's their way 
was having local politicians, having deputies, having senators, having majors. I know, I will really discuss it in the morning with Julius. Julius said to me, well, you know, 51 states, the, the, the local legislation is extremely different. And probably in some cases, if you don't run a president candidate, you lose your, your existence as a party. It, it's, I, I, I try to understand that. It's difficult for me to understand it. But I, what I know from my experience is what is important is to get people in these bodies, in the parliaments, in the Senate, in the local uh, parliaments. There is where you will grow. Uh, it, because even if you have 5% in the presidential elections, this is not an assurance for anything. The only real assurance is you, if there are Greens in the, in, the, in the Congress, if there are Green Senators, if there are Greens in the local parliaments. There, I, I, I would like to express this. I don't wish to. <laughs> I agree with Mark, and we should not intervene, but I, I, I thought I should have said this. Uh, well, thank you very much.